In this video, we'll take a look at uh, several ways to organize data and then display it in a graph. The main goal of statistics is to draw some meaningful conclusions about a population. And that begins with collecting the data. Data is uh, raw number, not now actually not always numbers, but something you've collected from a population. Now once the data has been obtained, organized and displayed, it becomes information that then can be used to make an informed decision. Often a census, and if you remember a census is uh, when you survey the entire population. So for example, if your population was the uh, uh, country of China, then you're talking about over a billion people. Now often a census is impractical. Even taking a census of all the people in Canada is a really large undertaking that costs a lot of money because we're ta you're talking about uh, collecting the data from uh, 30 some billion, uh, sorry not 30 some million people. Now a census is often practical because of the cost involved and the time it takes to do it. So a sample or a poll of the population, a small segment that should, should represent the interests of the whole population is often taken. Now data is often collected and first recorded in a frequency table and we're going to take a look at that in the first example on the next page. In this example, this is an example of a frequency table, 25 couples are asked the month of their anniversary and the responses are as follows. So um, we've got the months listed here and June was the first one so by June we would make a mark. Uh, May, so we put a mark by May and then December and then two Augusts in a row. Uh, a July, so put a mark there. September, a January next and then June, October, July, a March, June, another August, February, uh, December at the end there, uh, a second May, uh, another June, a July, the first November down here, and then another June. Now, now there's four Junes right now, so we make another one, we make a slash through it, and that symbol means five. Another July, a December, and then two Augusts in a row. So now this last column is the frequency part. Frequency means how many of each. This is really just to keep track of and then we count. So there's one January, uh, one February, and then one March. Now there, there were no anniversaries in April so we put a zero there. Uh, two in May, five in June, four in July, another five in August, and then one in the, each of the next three months and then three in December. And so that's the beginning of organizing that data uh, into a frequency table. And we're going to graph this in a later example. Now the thing about frequency tables is they show the frequencies but not the original data values. If we go back and look at that, if you didn't have this over here, if you just had the frequency table, then um, you couldn't you you don't specifically have this unless you go through and say okay that's January that's February that's a March there's a couple of Mays here so you don't see the original uh, data points especially if they're numerical uh, now a stem and leaf plot is uh, uh, one way to display the data and we're going to take a look at that in example two. It shows the frequencies a bit indirectly but I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that plus all the original data values um, the stem and leaf plots are, are a convenient way to compare two different sets of data and we'll do that actually in example three. Uh, in example two it says in the town of Winterville the number of days in December that at least one centimeter of snow has fallen has been collected over a 20 year period and the data is follows. So this 23 means in that year there were 23 days in December that at least one centimeter of snow fell and this next year there were nine days in that month and then 15 in that year etc. So to draw a stem and leaf plot, you make uh, kind of like a T here, and uh, this is the stem, and the leaves go over here. Now, if you look at the numbers, the largest number here is 30, and the smallest, I believe, is 4. Yeah. So there's numbers in the 1s, the 10s, the 20s, and there's uh, one number in the 30s. So for the stem, what we'll do, this 0 means the 1s, so this is actually the tens digit. This one will mean tens, this two means twenties, and this three means thirties. 
Now this 23 would go in this row then. So this 2 means that the 20s. So then what we would do is we put a 3 here. So that means that um, that 3 means actually 23. So there is a, uh, a month with 23 days of snow of at least a centimeter in this town of Winterville. So the next number is 9. So we would put a 9 here. 9 is the same as the number 0, 9. 15 is next. So that would go across from the 1. So we put that 5 there. That means 15. 13 would go right here, so we put a 3 here, so that means 13. And 30, so we put a 0 here. 5 would go over here uh, right beside the 9, so that means 5. 20, so we put a 0 there. 7, so 7 would go over here. And then we have a 14, so that goes in the 10s row. Uh, 21, so we put a 1 there. 9 here. 25, so a 5 here. 10, so we would put a 0 here, so that means 10. 4 would go here, and then 24 would go right there, the 4 right there. 16 would go here, and then we have a 26, and then an 18, so 8 there. Uh, a 15 right beside it, and a 14. So that's a stem and leaf plot. So when I say it doesn't specifically show the frequencies, it kind of does indirectly. That means that um, the, the number of days between 0 and 9 uh, we're actually five because you can count just five numbers here. The number of uh, days in Winterville or years, sorry, um, that there were at least one centimeter of snow uh, between uh, 10 and 19 would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight out of 20. Okay, so it does really show the frequencies, but not directly. Now, in example three, it says in the town of Smithstown, the number of days in December that at least one similar snow, so same kind of data as in example two, has been collected over a 20-year period. And so the data is as follows. So this is what I mean by it's a good way to, to compare two sets of similar data. And so what you can do is extend this uh, over to the other side. And so for the eight here, and of course these are the leaves here, we would put an eight here, 13, so a three there, 21, and then a 7 comes in, and then the 5, 14, 11, 6, 3, 4, 12, 16, 5 goes in the first row, a 7 and a 2, and an 8, and then 10, 0 there, 18, 11, and 12. And so there's the uh, um, stem and leaf plot for Smithstown. And so it's an easy way to compare the two of them, because this is the stem sort of the category and we can say that uh, in Smithstown there's a lot more uh, years that there's um, well under 20 days of snow with at least one centimeter in um, the town of Winterville there's a lot of there's mostly it's mostly between 10 and uh, the high 20s mid to high 20s because these two categories together are the largest so we can see that it does snow more days in Winterville than it does in Smithstown in general. Now case tables are used to organize data in some particular fashion. And in example number four, the uh, case table has the scoring data for five hockey players arranged by points. So arranged by points means it's ranked by points in an order of points. So Matt Jones has the most points, so uh, his 71 is in the top. Uh, Simon is next at 47, Wayne's next at 43, and then we have Susan has 23 points and Evan has 16. So it's arranged by points here. If we were to arrange it by a different attribute, for example, by goals, uh, Matt uh, had the most at 31, but uh, Wayne's next at 15. So when we arrange it by goals, Wayne's 15 is next, and then Simon, Evan is 12, and Susan is 9. So that's a case table. It's often used for sports data, for example, uh, as a great way to organize lots of data. Now, bar graphs are used to display discrete data by using the lengths of either vertical or horizontal bars to represent the size of the variables. Uh, the vertical bars are most often used when one of the variables is time. In this example, the, um, 
The following bar graph, graph displays the data from the frequency table in example one, the uh, wedding anniversary month. And so, for example, remember January had one, February one, March had one, April had none, May had two, uh, June was five, July was four, etc. So we have uh, one of the attributes or variables is across the bottom. If that happened to be time, time would definitely be across the bottom. This is, this is time, this is months here. And the frequency just goes up the side here. So that's an example of a vertical bar graph. Now pictographs are often used to display data using symbols. So in this example, uh, we've got the uh, population data from 2006 for five northwestern Ontario and Canada towns, uh, Kenora, Dryden, Sulaco, Red Lake, and Ignace. And it says the population, and this is in thousands. So for example, for Kenora, if we count here, each of these, so each of these people means a thousand. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that means that Kenora's population is about 15,000. Dryden, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So Dryden's population would be around 8,000 in 2006. So look out to about 5,000. Now notice the last two in Red Lake. There's four whole people, so that means 4,000, and then a part of one. And the fraction is meant to be about the fraction of a thousand that's that's there. So it looks like there's about half a person there. So about half of a thousand is about 500. So we could reasonably say that Red Lake's population then was around 4,500. The same with Ignace. There's a whole person. That's a thousand. And then a part of one. So that part might be, it looks like about half. So 400 or 500 people. So Ignace's population then was around 14 or 1,500. Now histograms are used to display continuous data and in some ways they look very much like bar graphs, they use bars. The width of the vertical bar is called the bin width and the bin widths or the, the width of the bar are they're supposed to always be the same. There's not supposed to be like a bar that's one wide and another bar that's two or three wide and generally around there should be around five bars five six seven bars is a reasonable amount if you have too many bars it cannot show the data very well not display the data and give you uh, a fairly good information about what this actually means so you don't generally want to have this many bars this is a bad example at the top here uh, this is a much better one because the bar widths are uh, there's less of them again there's usually supposed to be around five there's two four six seven there and uh, so the categories would be grouped together grouped together such that you have somewhere around five uh, uh, vertical bars for your histogram And in example seven, we're asked to create a histogram for the following 15 test marks. So the test marks, if you look at the table on the far left, are 65, 70, 72, etc. And so we could make a uh, frequency table. And notice that the, uh, the lowest mark here is in the 60s. So we could uh, make the bin width uh, five marks from 60 to 64. And then 60, so that's actually uh, five numbers, even though you might go 64 minus 60 is 4. So it includes 60, 61, 62, 63, and 64. So there's actually five numbers in that category. 65 to 69, 70 to 74. Again, I've got seven, so somewhere around five uh, vertical bars. And then the, the, the highest mark, if you look here, is uh, 91. So uh, that's the highest category we need. So if you count here, uh, the 60 to 64, there's only one in that category, so the frequency is one. I, I skipped the part where we do the tally here. Uh, 65 to 69, there's one 65 here, and there's another one down here, so the frequency would be two. And then you could do the rest of them. Now, the uh, this is actually has been created using a, a program called Fathom, and so this is the first bar is 60 to 64 so we would put the beginning of the first bar here and then 65 is the beginning of the next interval so 65 goes there and then this bar is actually 70 to 74 the beginning is 70 and so there's a height of one here 65 to 69 is two so this is too high etc uh, marks down here and the frequency is here 
And so that's what a histogram would look like for this test data. Now some information that you can read from the graph. Uh, first of all, notice that most of the students scored between and that's the middle three bars here. Most of the students scored between 70 and about 85. So a large part of the class scored in that interval between about 70 and 85. I noticed that uh, everyone passed the test. Uh, the lowest mark was in the 60s, so everyone passed, if, if 50 is a pass. And we can also see that no one scored between uh, 85 and 89 because there's uh, a zero for that category. So that's some information that you glean, could glean from that test. From that graph, sorry. And so that's a, a few ways that you can um, organize data and display it. And that's the end of the lesson.